Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I am your host, Harry Simeon. And on today's edition, I'll be providing further reaction to the news concerning Lauren Koscielny and we'll be uh, rustling our way through uh, the latest uh, transfer news or rumours anyway uh, concerning Arsenal Football Club. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the Koscielny topic. Now, this obviously made big waves yesterday people were talking about it everywhere it was the big story big news huge news in fact to come out Uh, our club captain has refused to travel to our pre-season tour of the United States he's essentially on strike now I've been thinking about this and I I wrote a piece on it for Vavil which I think will be published today um, where I spoke about how out of character this was for Lauren Koscielny and you know I, I do genuinely believe that at no point in Koscielny's nine years or whatever it's been at the Arsenal have I ever questioned his attitude his desire Um, I've questioned his ability at times I've questioned his reading of the game as a centre half the fact that at times I think he's too rash there's lots of criticisms you can level at him from a playing perspective but in terms of his attitude and personality I've never really had an issue with that Um, I never really thought he was captain material but that's because of his personality not because of anything else not because of a negative I just think he's too quiet he's not necessarily vocal enough etc etc but when you consider the other candidates at the club and the fact that he's been there for so long and he's one of the senior players then you know you understand why he had that role in the first place and I haven't really got too many issues with that but the more I think about this and the more I try and get my head around what's gone on the more I think that the club are just as much to blame in this whole scenario first of all I think the way the club have gone about making that announcement was petty I think it was unprofessional and I think and and dare I say it I think this is something that would never have happened under Arsene Wenger's watch now I'm not saying that I want Arsene Wenger back and all that so don't start jumping on me in the comments just yet let me you know let me say my bit hear me out what I mean by that is Under Arsene Wenger, the club were were very different in the sense that things were kept under wraps. Things were dealt with internally for as long as possible before they would hit the public domain. Yeah, of course, you'd get journalists speculating, you know, etc, etc. But you never actually knew the ins and outs for sure under Arsene Wenger until much further down, much further along the process. Now, what worries me about this is that Lauren Koscielny's obviously decided he's not going to go on the tour for whatever reason and we'll come on to his reasons in a minute but the club's decision to release that statement for me makes no sense you could have easily said Lauren Koscielny uh, due to a lack of fitness has you know stayed behind may join the team later on but at this present moment isn't fit you could easily say that and Every Arsenal fan will believe it because Lauren Koscielny has had countless injury problems over the years. But what Arsenal have done by saying what they said is they've opened the can of worms for themselves. You know, before this situation has been resolved, before it's been developed, and it feels like they've leaked it on purpose. And I don't know why. If you think about the fact that, you know, they released a statement that was no longer than two, three lines. That says a lot to me. It says to me that for Arsenal not to go into the detail of it and the ins and outs of it, that they they play some part in this as well. And and Lauren Koscielny is not the only person to blame. Now, am I defending Koscielny? No. Do I think that his actions are acceptable? Absolutely fucking not. He's the club captain. He cannot refuse to go on our preseason tour. He cannot do that. He has to be stripped of the captaincy immediately, in my opinion. There's no question about that. I don't think anybody would disagree. If you do, let me know in the comments and why. But what I will say is, for me, there was no need to make that statement. If you're going to make a statement because you want to keep the fans informed, if you're going down this new route of being transparent, open, honest with the supporters, then release a statement with detail, a statement that tells us exactly what has gone on, why this misunderstanding has happened, where's the miscommunication, what's gone on in behind the scenes, and that way, as fans, we'll be able to get behind the club. And I know people say that, you know, the club is bigger than any player, and I agree with that, but this is not the first time that Arsenal's lack of ambition, um, poor state, etc., etc., has led to a club captain wanting out. 
So at some point, you've got to question what the club's role in this is. It's not players all the time. You know, yes, you know, the likes of Van Persie, uh, Omri, Fabregas eventually worked their ways out of the club because of a lack of ambition, etc., etc. But there is a common denominator here, and all of them are talking about a lack of ambition. Koscielny's not said that yet. Koscielny's not said anything yet. And to be fair to him, he stayed classy because he's not commented at all. Neither of his representatives. I know that Football.London have reached out to his representatives. I know that various uh, other media outlets have done the same too. And they've refused to comment. They're not, they're not being childish. They're not playing games. They've refused to comment. And as far as I'm concerned, this wouldn't have come out if Arsenal didn't make the statement they did. Now, yes, things get leaked and journalists will write stories, but until the club come out and actually say something, it is exactly that, just the story. So I can't quite get my head around why the club have done this, why they've acted in the way that they have. And I personally disagree with it. Not to say, though, that Kishoni's actions are okay and acceptable. So, you know, there is blame on both sides for me. But it just feels like, and, and I don't know this for a fact, I'm purely speculating, but it feels like, for someone like Lauren Koscielny to return to pre-season training, demand to be released, demand to have his contract terminated, he has been promised something by this football club, in my opinion. And the club, for whatever reason, have changed their stance. Now, it could be because they thought that they would get you know, more transfers done by this point. They thought that they'd have a direct replacement for Lauren Koscielny in by now. Lots of talk about William Saliba coming in. It's not done yet, but we're hearing that he'll be loaned straight back to St Etienne. What does that mean? That means he can't directly replace Lauren Koscielny for next season. So are we in a situation where the club have made promises to Lauren Koscielny towards the back end of last season and now they can't stick to their word? We don't really know for sure. We're speculating. Um, but it feels to me like there is more substance to this. I feel like there's more to this story that we don't know and that Arsenal are not letting on. And with Lauren Koscielny remaining silent, we're not going to get that cleared up at this present moment in time. Fingers crossed we will learn more uh, in the coming weeks and, and understand exactly what's happened, what the miscommunication has been. But I find it very hard to believe that Lauren Koscielny is demanding what he is demanding, and that is to be released um, for free to return back to France without having had previous discussions with the club. I don't think he's walked in there and completely taken the club by surprise. Something has gone on here. Um, I, I read a report uh, from a uh, media outlet in France whose name escapes me at the minute, but there was a journalist who was saying that Laurent Koscielny had gone to the club uh, towards the back end of last season and spoken of the fact he was struggling with his fitness um, and you know and that's believable because we've seen Lauren Koscielny hit the deck break down lots of times during matches and continue uh, not looking 100% fit you know particularly towards the end of the season so the the story is that he went and he said to the club look I can't continue another year in the Premier League my body can't handle it what will it take to let me go Arsenal said that if a, an offer of around about four or five million euros came in, uh, they would allow him to leave. Apparently, Bordeaux have come in with that sum, uh, willing to take Laurent Koscielny over there and offer him a three-year contract. And now the club have gone back on their word and changed uh, changed their stance. They say that they want more for Koscielny and that they won't release him until a suitable replacement has been brought in now on the one hand I get the club protecting their own interests but on the other hand you don't make those promises if you're not going to allow it to happen and I've spoken previously on this podcast about how I think it's probably time for Lauren Koscielny to move on it's probably time we got him off the wage bill etc etc um, but the whole way this has been handled is is, is horrible it's not nice as supporters um, you know he's a, a player who's been with the club for a good nine ten seasons and we're gonna see his legacy ruined because of this and I just feel like it could have been dealt with in a much uh, better uh, professional way but let me know what you guys think about it and and don't get me wrong you know I'm not for a second defending Lauren Koscielny's actions I think his refusal to go on this tour is an absolute disgrace but do you agree with me that there's probably something more to this? There's probably a lot more substance to this story than we are being told at the moment. And I guess 
time will tell and, and things will come out eventually so let me know your thoughts in the comments uh, are Arsenal to blame as well uh, or is it solely down to Koscielny what do you think uh, don't forget to hit the like button too whilst you are at it in other news, uh, Arsenal youngster Ben Sheafy left the club uh, to join Doncaster Rovers on loan. Arsenal are continuing to be linked with Wilfred Zaha. The Ivory Coast crashed out of the uh, African Cup of Nations last night, meaning that if there is going to be any movement, if this is going to happen, if a deal is going to be done, we've got more chance of completing it now. Uh, so if you know something is going to happen, then I expect it to be in the coming weeks or coming days even. Uh, fingers crossed the fact that he's back now or he will be back very shortly will we'll move things along um, Arsenal continue to be uh, linked with Lamina of Southampton former Juve midfielder uh, had some abdominal injury issues uh, last season which ruled him out of quite a few of Southampton's games um, but from sort of videos I've watched and Tom Canton's um, tactical breakdown was really good um, as always and, and that provided some great insight but it seems like Mario Lamina is a little bit inconsistent would you have him at Arsenal for me it depends on what Southampton are asking for him and that plays a huge uh, factor in it and of course what Arsenal have available because we don't really know do we one week we're told we've got 40 million the next week we're told we could go up to 70 million for Wilfred Zaha so you just don't know what to believe at the moment um no sign of Christian Bielik uh, having a future at Arsenal. There were some reports a few days ago which we spoke about that said he'd been told he had no future at Arsenal. Well, he's not gone on the tour to the USA. So I guess that's a telltale sign. Um, and of course, in the last couple of days, the links between Mesut Ozil and Fenerbahce have been squashed by the club themselves. They've spoken about the fact that they are not in a financial position to make any deal happen. And uh, it's what I said a few weeks ago actually uh, Fenerbahce are broke and they're not going to be breaking the bank to bring in Mesut Ozil um, John Jensen uh, has been appointed as our chief scout for Scandinavia he's a little bit of a cult hero uh, amongst the older Arsenal fans um, the Dane of course uh, joined the club in 1992 off the back of his uh, country's remarkable European Championship victory um, and he scored a goal in that final. But yeah, Johnny Jensen is uh, our new Scandinavian uh, scout. And um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, pretty much all the latest news uh, coming out of the Arsenal Football Club. Of course, uh, an image of our third kit has been leaked. Um, you know, the other ones were leaked and they proved to be accurate. So I'm assuming that this one will be too. Um, it's sort of a... I don't know what colour that is. I don't know if it's like a dark, dark, dark grey, um, almost black with sort of yellow trimmings, gold trimmings. I really like it. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it on social media. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that too in the comments. And just a quick heads up. At the time of recording, we're around about 15 subs away uh, from hitting 2,000. Um, we wanted to get to 1,000 uh, by the end of the summer. And we're approaching 2,000, so we're really, really thrilled by that. Thank you so much for your continued support. I know that to other channels, that is not a significant number, but to me, it is. Uh, to little old me, it, it's a really big deal. So thank you so, so much. And uh, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please hit the button and help us get over the line in the next couple of days or so. Uh, we'll be back uh, on Monday with another Chronicles AFC, unless there is any breaking news uh, that we will need to cover. Uh, but until then, if I don't speak to you guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Look at me. I'm sitting in a vest. I've got the fan on. This is the life. Who would have thought it in England, eh? <laughs> Take care, guys.